Heavenly Father, as we open your word today, our prayer is that your spirit would just give us the understanding of the truth that you have for us today. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We've been studying about heaven, and so far we've seen that heaven is a very real, tangible place. It's a place that we'll have things that we'll be able to touch and see and smell and hear, and it's going to be very real and very vibrant and just be an experience that we've never experienced before. Uh, we've also learned that right now, even though we're not going to be in the final heaven, the final place where we'll spend eternity, there is an intermediate state. The intermediate state is when we've left our past life here on this earth, but we have not got our resurrected life when we'll be in a resurrected body with a resurrected uh, new earth to be in. It's kind of an in-between, an intermediate place. It's an intermediate heaven. There's an intermediate heaven and hell. We've also seen that in this intermediate heaven, we're going to have a body. It'll be recognizable. It won't be a glorified body, but it's recognizable. While we're there, we'll have memories of our life here on earth, of family members that are still here, uh, friends, neighbors, all of those kinds of things. We'll be able to interact with those that have gone on before us, and we'll see them uh, while we're there. We'll have a mansion. A mansion means that uh, doesn't mean that we'll have a one-room shack with an outhouse. It means that we'll have a wonderful place that we will occupy and be with it. There's going to be interaction with other people, friendships, camaraderie, those kinds of things that we'll be able to share. It's going to be a place of comfort and peace and rest. Our Savior, Jesus, is going to be there. We'll be able to walk and talk and spend time with Him. And then, of course, there's going to be a resurrection. When the resurrection takes place, we'll be joined with our body as it comes out of the grave and we will have a glorified body, and we will forever be with our Savior at the time of the resurrection and the rapture. So all of these things are real. But in spite of all of that, you would probably be amazed if I told you that there are a lot of people that really believe that heaven's going to be boring. Can you imagine that? They're going to be boring. Now, when you say that heaven's going to be boring, then you're making a very big assumption, and that assumption is that if heaven's boring, that must mean that God is boring. Well, I got news for you. God is anything but boring. And they, uh, there's a belief out there that uh, some people have grasped uh, based on their experience here on this earth right now, but they say that in order for you to understand and have things that are good, you got to have a little bad. You know, you got to have a little, a few things that are going to be bad in the world today uh, in order to understand and have the good. Uh, don't buy that. That's a lie from Satan. If you go back to the very beginning when God created the heavens and the earth before sin uh, had even... Uh, uh, happened before Adam and Eve even disobeyed God, before sin became a reality uh, for all of us human beings. And God went through creation, and what does it say? It said that he looked at it all and he said, it was good. No sin, no anything. I assure you, Adam and Eve were not bored. They had things that they were doing. They had our, uh, responsibilities to fulfill in tending the garden where God had put them. So heaven is not going to be bored. boring. Uh, don't buy in to the devil's lie that sin is exciting and righteousness is boring. That's what you hear today. If you want some excitement in your life, then you have to go down a different path and you have to do different things because uh, doing the right thing and being righteous is simply uh, boring. It's not very exciting. But sin doesn't make life interesting. It makes life empty. Sin doesn't uh, create adventure. In fact, it blunts it. It stops it. Sin doesn't expand life. Sin shrinks life. Sin, sin empties. Uh, uh, sin's emptiness that we experience or people experience through sinful lifestyles, it leads to boredom. They get bored. The boredom comes about. There's nothing new. I've experienced it. It doesn't last long. Whenever you're involved in a sinful activity, you go through, you had that activity. Ten minutes after you've done that activity, 
you're bored. You wonder why you did it. It doesn't have the thrill that it once had. It's not sustaining. It's temporary. It doesn't last. But Satan wants to uh, infiltrate you with his lie to keep going. So what I want to talk about today is with all of that going on around us, you say, well, what kind of things will we be doing in heaven? Have you ever wondered that? Scripture has a lot to say about that. One of the scriptures that I wanted to uh, share with you is in Psalms uh, 16, uh, verse 11. And in Psalm 16, verse 11, it tells us, it says this, it says, You will show me the path of a life. Now listen to this, in your presence, in God's presence, which is where I'm going to be when I leave this earth, is fullness of joy. So in his presence is fullness of joy, uh, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So we're going to be uh, have the fullness of joy and all of the pleasures that we can ever uh, conceive or, or even think about will be there at our disposal. So we have this looking forward. That's the direction that we're going. So what are we going to do and where are we going? Well, first of all, let's look at uh, what it says about the inhabitants of heaven. What does Scripture tell us about that? In Hebrews chapter 12, in verses 22 and, uh, through 24, it gives us some groups of people that are going to be there in heaven. It says this in Hebrews 12, But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. So that's in heaven. Uh, in to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of the just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. So we see several groups of people here, and let's talk about those. So when we get to heaven, who's going to be there? Well, first of all, it tells us to an innumerable company of angels. So there's going to be a whole bunch of angels in heaven, and we're going to be able to interact with these angels. Not only interact with them, but we'll get to know them. Uh, look at it this way. We will befriend them. We'll be friends. There will be some camaraderie there. We're going to worship with them. Uh, as we sing praises to God and worship God, we'll be doing that with them, and they're going to be there. Friendships with angels, we'll join with them in praising God. Scripture over and over and over talks about that, that we'll be singing and doing those things. Can you imagine having an angel as a friend? Can you imagine what that's going to be like, to be able to walk up and to learn and talk and visit and see what's going on in, the, in their lives? That'll be just incredible. So we know that there's going to be innumerable uh, angels that are going to be there. The next thing that we see is that it is the, the church of the firstborn uh, who are registered in heaven. It says the heavenly city of Jerusalem, innumerable angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. Well, now those are the people uh, that uh, that's uh, believers, those that have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In other words, when it says that they are registered in heaven, that means that they are enrolled. Their name is on the Lamb's Book of Life. They are there. So it'll be people that are going up there. You're going to have believers that have gone on before us so or are there when we're there. So you've got a bunch of angels. You've got all of these believers uh, people that have put their faith and trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And then it comes back and it says there, another group is the spirits of the just men made perfect. Those are the Old Testament saints. Uh, Abraham, Moses, Elijah, all of those people, they're going to be there as well. The interesting thing about that is, is that those people, the Old Testament saints, had to wait a long time uh, for the perfection that each of us received the very instant we trusted in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. They had to wait for Jesus Christ's death and resurrection before they could be glorified. So in heaven, we will be one with them in Jesus Christ. In other words, we're not going to be inferior to Abraham or Moses or Elijah because we will all be equal in righteousness, the righteousness 
of Jesus Christ. Isn't that going to be wonderful? So you're going to have Old Testament saints, we're going to have all of the believers that are there, and we're going to have just a whole bunch of angels that are innumerable. So you got angels, you got us, the believers, and then you got Old Testament saints. And then finally we see in verse 24, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. So Jesus is going to be there as well. So these are all of the people that are going to be there. Now let's view that to try to get this mental picture is all of those people will be our friends. Now, all of those people, just stop and think about who we're talking about. We're talking about Abraham. We're talking about Moses. We're talking about the Apostle Paul. We're talking about the disciples that are going to be there. We're talking about all of these people, all of our friends and family members, uh, you know, that are, that are saved are going to be there. And so that, and, and, and the angels, and that's what we're going to be, that's who we'll be talking with. That's who we'll be discussing things with. In other words, you're going to go up to those people and you're going to hug them around the neck. You're going to shake the Apostle Paul's hand. You're going to sit down and, and enjoy a time of fellowship with them. I'm certain we'll be eating even though we don't need to, but I'm pretty sure we will. And so you'll be able to sit down and do those things. Stop and think about what that means. Here on this earth, okay, I'm not sure about this, but I'm going to go ahead and say I believe that we use probably about 10% of our brain, okay? Give or take a little bit, but about 10% of our brain. In heaven, that's going to be 100%. Do you realize the door that that unlocks and opens up? Do you realize what that means? You know, I mean, that, that's incredible when you think about the possibilities. And so that, that, that's going to change our conversations. That's going to change things. When we're interacting with those people, all of these new friendships and relations, all these people that are around us, can you imagine going up and sitting down and having a time of fellowship with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? And say, just how hot was that furnace, you know? Uh, you know, and they're going to be able to share with you, well, you should have seen Nebuchadnezzar's face, you know? Uh, you know, when we were looking at him out of that furnace, you know? I mean, that, when you think about humor, when you think about that, that's good. Those are good things, and the good things come from God, untainted by sin. So I'm sure that we're going to laugh and listen to the stories that all of these people have to tell. They'll want to know, uh, listen to our stories about as we tell them about our experiences. Can you imagine the, all of the uh, disciples saying, you missed it, man. You should have seen it. We were out there in a boat. The big storm came up. And we looked up, and there's Jesus walking across on the water. We thought he was a ghost at first when we realized it was Jesus. And then they look, and they say, and then here comes Peter standing up. You know, you know how he is. He says, if that's you, Lord, can I come out to you? And he said, Jesus said, come on. And said, Peter stepped out of the boat, started walking towards the Lord. And then all of a sudden, he looked back at us and took his eyes off the Lord. Guess what? He sank. Should have seen the look on his face, you know. Can you imagine? them to explaining that and seeing that and doing that, telling you about how they witnessed uh, Jesus healing people and seeing those things, you know, all, all of those kinds of things. You know, Abraham, when you heard that voice of God telling you to get out of the land you were in, how did you know that was God? You know, how did you even phantom that? How did you get that? Moses, what was it like to walk through the Red Sea with water, walls of water on either side of you? you know, all of those kinds of things, and they'll be doing that. So one of the things we're going to be doing is interacting with all of these people. And when I say interacting, I mean we'll be walking and traveling. We'll be walking down a road together and sitting there just sharing with one another. We'll be sitting down around a campfire at night, you know, listening to the stories and sharing those, those kinds of of, of of moments that they had and things that they experienced and how wonderful it is. Can you imagine sitting around a campfire with Jesus Christ and he's sitting there telling you all of these stories and listening to all of the things that are going on and sharing things with you? God is the creator of the universe and we haven't even touched, even touched what all there is that he wants to show and share with us and do that. And we'll be able to do those things. So it's going to be interaction. We'll be in a body. We'll have hands and feet and eyes and ears and nose. And we'll walk and we'll, we'll talk and we'll, we'll sit down and we'll visit and we'll do those things. So that'll be one of the things uh, that we do and experience all of those kinds of things. Other things that we're going to do, when you look in there, there are several passages that I want to share with you 
just to kind of wet your whistle here. In Revelation chapter 20, there's two verses that I want you to that I want to share with you. One is verse 4, and it says, And I saw a throne, and they that sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And then in verse 6 it says, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him for a thousand years. Now it says reign. Both of those verses, verse 4 it says, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. That's the millennium. And then in verse 6 it says that they... Uh, and they shall reign with him a thousand years. What does that mean? That means that we're going to rule. That means we're going to rule with Jesus Christ here on this planet for a thousand years. Now, can you imagine that? We're going to rule. Well, what does rule mean? When you say rule, what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, we're going to set goals. We're going to have a direction that we're going in. We're going to devise plans. We're going to share ideas with one another and, and what we're experiencing and what we're seeing. Uh, in, uh, in Luke chapter 16, I believe it's the parable of the minus. When you look at that parable, there's two verses there. And of course, the one that had 10, you know, and they, he came back and he increased it. He says, you're going to be over 10 cities. The other one came back and he had five. He says, you're going to be over five cities. He's talking about future rules. Reward, so you're going to be set up. In other words, I'm going to rule. I'm going to be delegating responsibilities to those that are under me as their leader. And then there's going to be people above me that are going to be delegating responsibilities to me. So we will have very meaningful things and responsibilities and tasks that we will be doing as we're ruling and reigning with Christ on this world for a thousand years. So that means that, that there's going to have to be uh, interaction, energy, exp you know, uh, uh, put forth. We're going to have to uh, be thinking about things. We're going to set goals. We're going to have ideas. We're going to be managing things and doing all of those kinds of things. A thousand years we're here and, and making sure that everything is done according to uh, with our Lord's commands and what he wants to glorify him. So those are things that we're going to be doing. And then in Revelations 22, uh, verse 3, it says this, it says, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants, us, shall serve him. Well, when you talk about service and serving, service and serving uh, is that service is an active word. It's not a passive word. So that means that uh, we're going to have responsibilities to fulfill. We're going to uh, expend energy. We're going to have unlimited resources at our disposal to carry out all of the things that God wants us to be able to do. And so you can see that we'll have responsibilities and we'll do things. I, I, look at it this way. Uh, do you realize how creative we could be. Now you stop and think about, let's look at, at art, for instance. You, look, you go out and you go into uh, the museums that are even in Philadelphia or wherever, and you go through and you look at Rembrandt, and you look at all of these wonderful paintings, and you look at, at, at that, and you just marvel at that, and you look at that. But when we have the creative ability that we're going to have by using 100% of our brain, uh, we will be able to paint and, and, and come up with, with paintings and portraits using colors that we never thought were imaginable. Painting things in ways that we've never dreamed that we would ever be able to do again. That creative ability that's there and exploring all that is. Everything that you do is going to be perfect and it's going to be wonderful, but the remarkable thing is, is that your very best work is always ahead of you. It's always always ahead of you. You're always exploring. You're always learning. And so creatively, just stop and think about that. Think about the music. Think about the composers that we've had and think about the creative ability that we have. Music such as we've never heard before or never even dreamed possible is going to be taking place. Well, if that takes place, somebody's going to be, be, be writing that down, but it's different than it was before. We're, we're not bound by all of the things that bind us or, 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 or damper creative abilities and things that we have now will not be that way in heaven. We'll be creating and doing. Can you imagine 
imagine painting this wonderful masterpiece because I'm an artist and I have that, that capability and I do it in a way there and somebody says, that is just marvelous and wonderful. You say, well, here, take it home and, you know, and, and, and hang it up, you know. Uh, your best work is always ahead. It's, it's always doing that. So what have we seen so far? One, we've seen the groups of people that are going to be there that we'll all be interacting with. We'll have time to listen to stories and to ask questions uh, back and forth with all of the Old Testament saints, with the angels that are there, with Jesus Christ himself, and we'll be sitting around and we'll have uh, that camaraderie, those kind of relationships and friendships will be there, and that's going to take up time. The other thing that you need to understand, not only that, but we're going to have responsibilities. During the thousand-year reign in the millennial, when we're there, we're going to have responsibilities uh, and, and, and tasks to perform and things to do that's going to involve thinking and setting goals and deriving uh, plans and sharing ideas with one another about proceeding and the best way to accomplish things and, 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 and that kind of interaction. But there's no jealousy. There's no, I'm trying to one-up you. There's none of that. It's all, uh, the team is working in absolute perfect harmony. Can you imagine that? All of the co-workers working in absolute harmony. I don't have to go back behind anybody to check them because I know that their work is going to be done absolutely perfect. And so we, we delegate all of this out and we do all of these responsibilities and we have all of these things going on. So we're going to be actively involved using what God has given us to glorify Him and to reign with Him and rule with Him. When we finally get to the new earth, the new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem and we're there in eternity, then we will be working with God, the creator of the universe, to rule and reign the universe. That's what we'll, we'll be doing those kinds of things. Stop and think about it. They, uh, uh, what about travel? Well, we already know from uh, 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 in Revelations uh, 22, uh, or it talks about uh, streets of gold. Now, it didn't say paths of gold, so it's not a little bitty path, it's streets of gold. So that means if there's a street of gold, how am I going to travel? What am I going to do? Well, obviously, I'll be able to walk wherever I want to go, but is there going to be some other mode of travel? How will I go from one place to the other? But I do know that I'll be doing that. I'll be able to go from here to there and here to there. When we'll be on this earth, we'll be able to travel all over and around this earth. We'll be going from one place to the other, so there will be travel involved. There's going to be trees and mountains and, 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 and you know, crystal clear water and rivers and all of these things, and we'll be going from, from one place to the other. It says that we're going to be worshiping God. Revelation 15, uh, verse 2, it tells us that uh, he says, And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire, and those who had the victory over the beast, over his image, and over, the, over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps for God. So they had these harps, a musical instrument, and they're playing these musical instruments. So that tells me that part of the things that we'll be doing is listening to and playing musical instruments. You know, whether when you think of a harp, you think of all kinds of things go through your mind, but that harp could be something that we've never even experienced before. But it'll be harps, the music that's, that's there. In, uh, in Revelation 14, verses 2 through 3, And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of a loud thunder. And I heard the sound of the harpists playing their harps. They sang, uh, as it were, a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. And no, and no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. And so... We see that there's going to be singing and praise and musical instruments. We'll be traveling. We'll be interacting. We will have such creative ability and, and, and uh, the ability to, to compose music. Uh, we'll have productive work to do. But all of us are working in complete and absolute harmony in everything that we're going to be doing. Exactly what you'll be doing and how those rewards will be divvied up, I can tell you, however you spend your life here is going to determine what your life's going to be like there. Uh, that's a fact, uh, you know, and so when you get there and we're doing that, we'll all be doing productive work. We'll all be working in absolute, complete harmony, uh, but some will have more responsibilities than others. But there won't be any jealousy. There won't be any, 
one-upping you. There won't be any gossip. There won't be any of that. It's people sharing their ideas, talking with one another, moving around and seeing in this absolute wonderful place and working towards that. And we will never, ever run out of uh, the things that we want to learn and know and expand the horizons and do all of that uh, you know, that we'll be doing. So just imagine a world like that. Absolute, complete peace. Absolute, complete uh, harmony. Any entertainment you have is going to be pure entertainment. I mean, it's going to be, you know, the singing, the music, and all of the things that we do. Are, it's all, every single thing that is done is done to glorify God. Everything, even the work and responsibilities that we have. And so in Scripture it says, focus on these things. So we need to focus on these things. What things? Well, Heaven is a real place. Hell is a real place. But heaven is a real place. He says, set your mind on the things that are above. So I want to be focused on heaven. It's a wonderful place. It's got streets of gold. It's got trees and mountains, and it's beautiful. And the atmosphere and the smells are going to be smells that I've never smelt before. I'll see colors that I never dreamed were possible. When I'm there in heaven, I'll be able to have friendships and relationships and camaraderie and all of this with angels, with the Old Testament saints and all the believers that are there. I'll be able I'll have the capability to use 100% of my brain, which is going to dramatically increase creative ability, the ability to understand. The conversations will be totally different as we go about our daily lives and uh, we'll have productive work that we'll be doing and everybody will be working in complete harmony and everybody will be doing their part, fulfilling their responsibilities and their tasks that they do and it's all done to glorify God in this wonderful environment where sin and corruption does not exist. And so that's where we're going. That's the, that's, that's the ultimate destiny of our life. When you think about that, why would I even worry about what's going on? in this place you know uh, we, we, we should be concerned and we want to be good citizens there's no doubt about it scripture clearly teaches that to be a good citizen but I'm telling you when people say I hear people say it all the time the best is yet can come wrong <laughs> wrong it's not not here in this world the way that it is this world is fading away it's fading away and is doing that at, at, at just light speed almost now. Every day it just seems like it's just, you know, the turmoil, the, the uh, violence, the aggressiveness, the this, the that, and all of the things that are happening. And we can get so wrapped up in that. But Scripture says don't set your mind on those things. Don't set your mind on those things. Set your mind on the things that are above. Because if we set our mind on the things that are above, when we're looking towards that, when I know that's where I'm going, when I know that's where I'm going to spend eternity, then it is going to affect and change how I live my life and the decisions that I make. And I want we, we need to be as aggressive as we can in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is fast becoming harder and harder to be able to do that uh, without the fear of persecution of some kind. And so we can see the direction things are going. We can look at the trends. We can, we can uh, understand those kinds of things that are happening. Uh, uh, it was in Answers in Genesis, Ken Ham, I think it was in his blog. Uh, I haven't completely read the whole thing, but he's talking about trends that they're seeing. You have a group of people that uh, kind of follow global demographics. You know, they look at all of the demographics. and So they've got tons of, of data there, but one of the trends they're seeing, they say that in the vast majority of the nations in the world, they're seeing a trend to where the replacement population uh, is, is, is falling. In other words, there's a gap between young people and old people, and the gap's getting larger. So that means that the older uh, the population gets, then all of a sudden, and you don't have as many young people coming in, there's a big gap right there. And so when that happens, then you get into situations, well, who's going to pay taxes? Who's going to do this? Who's going to pay for health care? Who's going to do these things? So you can see these things shrinking up. And so uh, I think he said there was 195 nations in the world, and out of those 195, 183 of them, these trends are there. They're saying that quite possibly by the end of the century that it could be really a serious thing. Well, that's what, 2100. So when you get there, you can see these kind of trends taking place. Now, what the interesting thing to me was there's all kind of reasons for that. 
that they were coming up with, but none of them mentioned abortion. <laughs> and no, nobody mentioned infanticide. So when you kill, if we kill off millions of babies in this world, in the United States of America, can you imagine what that is on a global basis? I mean, you just, you know, goes up. So when you kill off billions and billions of that through infanticide, which is exactly what it is, then you're going to, as the scripture says, reap what you sow. So it's coming. It's coming. There's going to be a gap, and there, you're not going to be able to fill the gap. You're going to have less people paying into the system and supporting it than you do taking out. And so that opens the door for all kinds of things. And that's just one trend that's going on. So I'm telling you, if you want to be upbeat, if you don't want to be discouraged, if you don't want to be just feel like there is a weight upon you and the anxiety levels go up when you look at the world around you, you focus on heaven. Focus on heaven. Set your mind on the things that are above because the things here on earth are not going to get any better. So I am setting my mind on the things that are above as we are instructed to do in Scripture. And when I set my mind on that and I use the Word of God to fuel my imagination, I can just see and picture all that's going to be available, all that's going to be there, and what a wonderful life it's going to be, and what a wonderful time it's going to be to have that kind of interaction, to have that kind of security, and to know that that's where I'm going to spend it. And so I want to be able to share uh, all of the truth of the gospel truths with as many people as I can, as fast as I can, and as efficiently as I can in order for them to be able to have the opportunity, the opportunity to be able to spend eternity in what a wonderful place that's going to be. And that's what we need to be doing. That's where the focus is. Not focused on all the mess that's going on around here, but it's focused on that. Because no matter how much you do here, no matter how much you do here, no matter how much you want to make things better, no matter how much you do here, it's not, go we've already seen, God's word tells us where it's going. So we know where it's going regardless of what we do. So we have to be in the world. I want to interact in the world and I want to do that with my mindset on the things that are above. I want to be actively involved in doing everything I can to fulfill my role and my responsibility uh, in God's redemptive plan for this world. Because one day I'm going to stand before him and he's going to say, look at all the opportunities that you had. Here's the opportunities. You know, here's the things that you had. And so I want to be responsible in a few things uh, while I'm here on this earth. And so that's what we need to be focused on. Those are the things we need to be focused on. Don't get caught up in the world. <clears throat> Don't, get caught, <clears throat> Don't get caught up in that. But be focused. When you set your mind on the things that are above, it will affect how you live here today. Now, you you contrast that with hell, and you, uh, you get a totally different picture. People have this vision of hell. Well, it's going to be hard in hell, but, man, I'm going to have uh, me and all my drinking buddies, and we're going to sit down there, and we're going to chase women, and we're going to do all these wonderful things in hell. And I got news for you. As best as, best as, as you can figure out in Scripture, it's not going to be that way at all. In fact, you'll probably be in isolation. You think friendship? You're going to have friendship? Friendship is a good thing. All good things come from God. God's not in hell, so if God's not there, scratch that off your list. That's number one. Number two is you're going to have a memory in hell. And what are you going to be remembering? You're going to remember all the times the gospel was shared with you and all the times that you rejected it. And you'll go through all of eternity understanding that you are where you are of your own doing and the choices that you made on rejecting God, and you're constantly going to remember that. It's a place of torment, uh, isolation and torment. Uh, it's not going to be a place where you're interacting with people and interacting and doing things. Contrast that with heaven where you have these four groups of people that are going to be there, including Jesus Christ and angels and believers and Old Testament saints, and we're all going to be there interacting, sharing, doing productive work, everybody working in complete harmony in order to glorify God, and God is going to dwell with us. God doesn't need a dwelling place, but he has chosen to dwell with us. And so he is. He's going to be there. That's where we're going to be, and there's absolutely nothing on this earth that even compares to that. 
and it's not going to get any better. So we need to stay focused. We need to be productive people. But everything that we're doing with all the gifts and abilities and directions that God leads us, when we're following his will in our lives, then we're going to uh, fulfill the responsibilities and the tasks that he has given each one of us in his redemptive plan. So the question remains for us as believers, are we going to uh, rise to the occasion or are we not? You know, And so we have to rise to the occasion for as long as we are here. But if whether we leave this earth through physical death or through the rapture, uh, doesn't matter. But, you know, to me, it's just, here's, if I die tonight, I know that when I breathe my last breath, that my soul is, is gone. My body, as scripture says, is asleep. And so my soul leaves and I am immediately escorted, not by one angel, but a group of angels. And I am escorted from these angels into the presence of Jesus Christ, into his presence in that intermediate state. And when I go there, I'm going to have a body that's going to be recognizable. I'm going to see my Lord and Savior. I'm going to see all of those that have gone on before me. There's going to be Old Testament saints there. I'm going to be able to see all of that and experience all that. It's going to be total comfort and total peace. Total comfort and total peace. Uh, it, it, the interactions and the things that, that, that you'll experience and feel and see and touch and, and smell and all of those wonderful things and the music and the heart, all of that is going to be there. And that's where I'm going to be. When I look at it that way, what, in the, what can death possibly do to me? Nothing. Death is nothing but a doorway into the afterlife. It's nothing but a doorway into the presence of my Lord and Savior. So I'm not concerned about that. I'm not worried about that. And that's just that that right there removes a ton of anxiety off of people. But I'm not worried about that. But I'm going to focus on those things. Being about God's business and live my life in a way that will glorify Him. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether you eat, sleep, or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That sums up the Christian life. Everybody says, what's the Christian life about? The Christian life is about glorifying God, period. And that covers a whole lot. So let's focus on heaven as we go. Next week we're going to talk about what kind of a body am I going to have? Well, it's going to be indestructible. I always thought I was indestructible. My grandkids believe that I am anyway. But I mean, I sit up here, you know, it's going to be indestructible, but there's more to it than that. So we have all of these wonderful things looking ahead of us, and, and, and then I'm going to have this wonderful glorified body, and what does that mean? You know, so we'll look at that. But begin to focus on heaven. Don't get caught up in this world. Focus on heaven and where you're going and watch and see how that affects you. And then as a individually and collectively as a body of believers, let's rise to the occasion and fulfill our part in carrying out God's redemptive plan on this earth. Father, I come to you now just grateful for each person that's here. I thank you so much for what you've told us in your word about our, our uh, eternity and our existence and, and heaven and what it's all alike. Father, it's just so encouraging and so uplifting when we think about that. But Father, while we're here, help us to stay focused. Help us to seek your guidance and your wisdom in the best way that we can reach people with the truth of your word, the gospel that you have for them and the love that you want to Allow them to feel. Father, help us to participate in fulfilling our part, our role, right here where we are in your redemptive plan. Father, we pray for those that we'll come in contact with. I pray for each person that's here today and pray that you'll press upon them and give them opportunities and not just give them, but help them to understand and to recognize the opportunities right where they are, the neighborhood missionary where they are, those on the right, on the left, across the street, down the road, wherever they might be, to provide opportunities, open the doors and help us to grab them and to seize them and to live our life in faith and to be totally committed to glorifying you and totally committed in sharing the gospel as the opportunities come with those that are around us. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Don't forget uh, Wednesday at 6.30, anybody that wants to, I'll be up here and we do the Skype uh, Bible study. And, uh, and then also at 5 o'clock, there's there'll be a uh, we'll you know those that are that feel led we will uh, uh, do 